team, Uncle Jojo Wong Jika to another Rip Roaring episode. Great to see you all again. Today, I'm looking at hammer and nails. I got a very good message from an up and coming carpenter. Uh, Sharon was her name and she's asked me, Shazza, this one goes out to you. So Shazza's asked me about how do we hold a hammer? What's the best size hammer? And what's, how do we go about nailing in nails into different timbers? Some awesome questions, a lot of information. I'm gonna to touch on based on all of that, very basically. And I'll extend it in the future. Firstly, the best size hammer to get is the hammer that fits most comfortable. When I teach joinery in the workshop, this is a 20 ounce hammer and it's perfect for that kind of thing. Even when, even when I'm chiseling away, I can be using the back of my hammer to be tapping that. And it's really, it's not too heavy. I can move my hand up the grip and I can chisel that really nicely. When I'm using it for a, a, to whack in nails, I can use that nicely. But I've jumped ahead of myself. Sorry Shaz and show, sorry team. First and foremost, when we look at a hammer, it doesn't so much matter on the size, it more matters of the grip. And I learned this from a Japanese guy many, many years ago. He was an expert in Kenjitsu, which is a sword art of Japan, samurai sword art. And what he would tell me is when he held a hammer, he would use his lifeline here against the edge of the hammer and hold it pinching with these bottom fingers. And this back finger was a steering rod. Much earlier than that, when I was about 14 years old, I hung out with a cabinet maker slash furniture maker, Mr. Mills. Mr. Mills is a legend in joinery. And he taught me something very, very similar. But again, it was around about steering with your thumb on the back of the hammer. Now your thumb doesn't have to go directly on the back. Your thumb can come around the side slightly. But what it does is it holds the hammer into position into the palm of the hand. And I can't stress that enough. You don't want to hold white knuckle. If your knuckles are white, your grip's too tight. How do you like that one? If your knuckles too white, if your knuckles are white, your grip's too tight. So don't go gripping it really hard. There is a time for that. If I'm doing demolition and I've got a mash hammer, then I have white knuckles because I'm really giving it a good slog. Another thing when we look at a hammer is almost all hammers will taper at the end. So do tomahawks and axes. And the reason that is, is so your hand gets locked into position and it doesn't fly out when I'm doing a big hit. If I'm still doing a big hit on this, I can still just move my grip a bit and I'm still focusing on these fingers pushing the hammer back into that lifeline in the middle of my hand. So I've got my lifeline, my hammer goes in there, my grip comes around and pushes into that, and then my fingers go here. This is fairly loose the whole time. And then I've got really good control of my hammer. Now, I've put two nails here. You can see that the two nails come in on angles. This is called dovetail nailing. Here, dovetail nailing. So the reason I like to dovetail nail is because by opposing the angle of my nail, what it does is it pulls my material into position. And that's what I want to be doing. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to be doing is pulling my materials together. This is actually an old technique that I was taught when we used to lay floors directly onto our joists. And we dovetail nail, and as we dovetail nail, we would pull the decking board or the flooring board into position and lock it tight so it didn't move. A nail works by friction, which means that it can be pulled out by friction. If somebody's walking up and down on a floor and the nail is driven just straight down, then what's gonna happen is, as the floorboard moves, and it can only be a little poof teeth, as the floorboard moves, those nails can move just that little poof teeth each time. So eventually, you're walking and you can actually feel the tops of the nails where your feet are. Another thing to look at is the rounded nose on, these have got a very, very, very slight rounded nose. What happens is, as we're nailing it down, you'll see just now that there's a small little indent just here. And what that little indent does is that it pushes the nail head slightly flat. So if I look at that, you can see there, that's been pushed down and it's nice and slightly underneath, indented and slightly underneath 
the surface there so that when I sand it or if I do something with it, I don't hit that nail. Another thing is, or if we're doing floorboards or decking boards, that we do the same thing. The dovetail nail is a very good old school trick. I can't recommend it enough. Even if you did one straight and one opposing angle, at least that's working as well. But dovetailing nailing is excellent to learn. Now, put all of those pieces together. So I've got my special grip on my hammer. I've got a hammer that suits my hand. And then when I hammer down, obviously try and fix it in position. And I'm directly hitting the nail in the center of the hammer. Again, We've got a 20 ounce here. I use a 24 ounce on all of my building sites. And a lot of the apprentices I teach that are framers, they use 30 ounce hammers. I find 30 ounce hammers way too heavy, but they're there for a reason. If you want to use them, then you use them. You need to decide. You need to play with these as much as you can. Play with your own tool and see where that takes you. Thanks for watching. Any questions or queries about using hammers or different types of hammers, flick it over and I'll answer it for you best I can whenever I can. Until then, stay on real banana peels and I'll see you in the soup.